Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse 6, our subject, justified by his blood. Justified by his blood. We're talking about the principles of the righteousness of God. The theme of Romans, righteousness by faith. The first principle was condemnation. Goes from chapter 1, verse 18, to chapter 3, verse 20. Then justification. Chapter 3, verse 21, to the end of chapter 5, verse 21. We've said three things so far about justification. One, that it's dependent upon the work of Jesus Christ alone. That's chapter 3, verses 21 to 31. Secondly, that it's described in the life of Abraham in chapter 4. And now in chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, it's declared in the rewards of our salvation. And last time I gave you a simple outline of justification out of Romans. I don't know if you wrote it down or not. Let me just quickly repeat it. We learn in Romans 8.33 that the source is God, not man. Who is he who justifies? It is God. The Bible's very clear. Uh, secondly, the reason is God's grace. Romans 3.24 uh, being justified freely by His grace. It's not our merit, not our worthiness. Third, the means is faith, not our works. Romans 3, 28. We are justified not by the works of the law, but by our faith. The price we're looking at tonight is the blood of Jesus Christ, not our performance. Romans 5, 9. And the results also in Romans 5 are twofold. One, Peace with God, chapter 5, verse 1, that we looked at in our last study together. And saved from wrath, chapter 5, verse 9. So let's pick up our reading at Romans 5, verse 6, and we'll read down to verse 11. Romans 5, 6 to 11. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement or the reconciliation. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank You for Your Word. And God, we pray as we study our justification through the blood of the Lord Jesus. May our hearts rejoice in that we've been washed white as snow. For what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I pray for those listening who are not really sure of their own relationship to you. Oh God, help us to see it's not our good works. It's not our performance. But it is the precious blood of Christ that paid for our sin. And through faith, we can be declared righteous before a holy God because Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. We thank you in the wonderful name of our Messiah, the Lamb of God, who alone is worthy to receive all the glory and honor and power and praise and blessing and dominion forever, our King of kings and Lord of lords. In his name we pray. Amen. Two things that result from being justified by faith. Last time we looked at the first one, a right relationship with God. Peace with God, according to chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. The second one we look at tonight in verses 6 to 11, a wonderful redemption. Two things we have because we've been declared righteous. One, a right relationship with God. Peace with, literally, toward the God, and a wonderful redemption saved from wrath. For those of you who are taking notes, we're going to deal with at least seven things 
in these few verses. I want to start with the realization of our spiritual condition. Look at verse 6. Do you realize your spiritual condition and why you need to be declared righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ and not your own efforts? The Bible puts it this way. When we were yet without strength. Without strength. The Greek word is austenon, a noun used 21 times. The verb austeneo used 42 times. Here we have 63 times in the New Testament the Bible telling us without strength. It's translated sick. It's translated weak. In our text, we have the New International saying powerless. The New American Standard saying helpless. In Matthew 26, 41, in the garden, Jesus said, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, for the spirit is willing and the flesh is what? Weak. The word is austenos. Stenos, to be strong. Ah, meaning no strength. We aren't just sick. The flesh is not just sick. The flesh is totally helpless. It has no power in and of itself to recover. When we were without strength means there's not an ounce of ability in any of us that could ever save us for even one moment of time. In John 11, it is used of Lazarus. He was sick. How sick? He died. That's called being sick. Same word is used in Acts 9.37 of Dorcas. How sick was she? She died. It was a serious illness. In James 5.14, it says, Is anyone merry? Let him sing songs. Is anyone sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Obviously a very serious illness without the ability to recover. It's used by medical doctors at the time of our Lord, meaning that you saw all the doctors and they have absolutely no hope. You're without cure, without hope, as Ephesians 2 says. You're without strength, Romans says. There is no way anyone here can save themselves. Amen? And yet we see Christians everywhere preaching a gospel of works and human performance, that somehow we're able by our own efforts to clean up our act and to live a life for the Lord. No, we aren't, folks. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. There is none righteous, no, not one. We are totally without strength, totally helpless. In chapter 4, it was said of Abraham, who was long past the age of burying children and of his wife, They they were dead. They were totally weak and unable to have a child. Totally without strength. It's used in Romans chapter 8, verse 3, in relationship to the law. It says what the law could not do in that it was weak, austenos, without strength, through the flesh. There's nothing wrong with the law of God. It's perfect and holy and righteous and good. The problem is in our flesh. We don't have the ability to keep the law. We violated. James 2.10 says, you offended in one point and you're guilty of all of it. So the whole text on this wonderful reward of our salvation, namely a wonderful redemption, starts with realizing our spiritual condition. Without that precious blood of Christ, there is no hope for anybody here. 